across the sea of character sheets, deep in the forest of D20s lies the mountain of source books. Welcome to the mountain of source books. We hope you enjoyed your climb. My name is Jeffrey Vincent Dale, and I welcome you back to our actual play of the Monster of the Week mystery, The Crystal Assassin. Previously, the team had been hired by a local fortune teller named Serenity Evans to look into the whereabouts of her former student, Selino Adesi. She was concerned about her because of an ominous dream that foretold some kind of danger. Their investigation led them to an art gallery where they found a crystal statue of a local celebrity named Dinah Harrington, which had previously appeared in Frank's dream. After studying the statue and learning that it actually was Dinah, they decided to sneak the statue out and managed to get it back to Dr. Grace's home. Following up on a lead involving a local crime boss named Quincy Francetti led to Detective Hawk breaking into his home to look for clues, while Frank and Dr. Grace investigated a warehouse that he owned. The warehouse ended up being a solid lead as they quickly located Salino there, but before they could find out the details of the situation, someone outside of the building began to shoot in through the windows. Frank and Dr. Grace tried to talk to Selino, but because she was in danger and had no reason to trust them, she used magic to summon another of the large crystal mantis creatures and ran off while it charged at her attacker. The team gave chase, and after deactivating a magical trap, they managed to catch up to her and explain the situation. Now that she was convinced that they were not a threat to her and might even help keep her safe, she agreed to go back with them to Dr. Grace's home. The full team, now reunited, questioned Selino about what was going on, and learned that she was working as an assassin for someone named Kenta, using the Crystal Mantids as her weapons. She had been hired to eliminate Quincy and his gang, and the Mantids were turning them all into Crystal, which she was then selling on the side for extra profit. She showed interest in a book that Dr. Grace had, and so she traded a crystal shard for it. Dr. Grace agreed to the trade and rushed her out of her home because Selina was showing signs of losing control of her mantids because of the close proximity to the statue of Dinah. And now on to part six of our story. That was not great. Well... Let's study the crystal and see if we can use it to, to cure it. And if not, shrug. I don't know. The only solution I can think of involving that situation was to just shoot her. And I thought that was a very uncreative thought process. It wouldn't have told us much, but... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a big magic spell to track her. So I want to make a spell that will specifically track her based on the DNA that she left on this crystal. How can I do that? All right, let's see. I would assume it would just take a lot of time. Oh, you know what? Since it's like over time, I will say that it is big magic. It's not going to be like a really difficult one, though. You don't know the ritual, so you're going to have to spend a day researching it. Okay. So I let everyone know what I'm going to be doing, and I'm going to be researching how to take her DNA and track her. Do I need to roll for this? It says if you meet the requirements, then the magic takes effect. So I guess not. Okay. Is there a way, like, we could, any books, like, creatures from another dimension, like, if I could find anything about these mantids in her books? What if we summoned another creature and we had a monster fight? I mean, uh, that is something you can do. <laughs> That's not even big magic. It's regular magic. Summon a monster into the world. Not yet. I'm essentially making a crystal ball to observe her. I guess I would just like to help the people who have been turned into crystals. The big problem is that she's going to keep doing that. Yeah. So I'm going to work on that spell. And you two, I guess, figure out how to help the crystallized people, and also maybe who Kenta is, or where the creatures came from. I think I'm going to do research on figuring out where they came from and how you kind of summon them so that I have the idea if it's possible to stop it. But other than that, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. I'm going to research trying to turn people back human from Krista. Or maybe if there's anything like turn back from stone, there must be some kind of magic of turning people back to flesh from something. Okay. I mean, there's probably Medusa someplace and some way to fix them. All right. 
You know, we could just turn her into crystal. One day later. We all solved everything. <laughs> Nothing was solved. It's fine. So let's see. The crystal mantids. I'll have you roll investigate a mystery. Are we all rolling on a separate thing? I got a nine. Teach doesn't have to roll. Steve and Jess will both roll. I got a ten. So for Jesse, you got a nine. So you get to ask one question. Yeah, where did it go is the question. The big thing I'm, I'm trying to figure out is, where do these things come from? So when they're unsummoned, where do they go? Okay, based on your research, it looks like the specific dimension that these creatures are from. All right, I'm going to see if I can, next time we run into her, I'm going to see if I can kind of reverse the polarity for a spell and see if I can kind of use that information to limit her ability to summon them. Okay. Because I, I know vaguely where it's coming from, and I technically, as a investigator, can use magic. Yeah, okay. All right, and then Steve, what did you say your role was again? I got a 10. ten. Okay, so two questions. Based on what the questions are, I'm going to say that counts more as read a bad situation. I mean, it doesn't really necessarily fit that it's like an immediate danger, but I feel like the questions are going to be more useful. What's the best way to protect the victims? Yeah. I, I go back to investigate a mystery. There was a what could fix it, cure it, or slow it down. Oh, there is? Yeah. Wait, what's that? That's an that under at? investigate a mystery. Oh, that's not on my... Oh, maybe the mine's the updated list that has all of it, so maybe that was added later on. Oh. Oh, all right. Well, we'll go with that. <laughs> I did not know that, that my list had different stuff. I'll actually I'll send that in all the right. uh, resources, because... It was like, I feel like there's not enough questions on yeah. these lists. Like, investigate a mystery, and this only seems to work if you see a monster. Yeah. Hey, so what can cure it? Who loves kiss? <laughs> oh, wow. This has so many more yeah. things. All right, so you have three options. Your first option is not ideal. You can alter the crystal so that the soul within can animate it, basically turning them into a crystal person. It might be good for you to like, but... Okay, any other way? Uh, you could create a clone body via science and magic and then transfer the soul into the new body, or you could try and use big magic to revert the body to flesh. But you would need a sample of the mantid's bite venom. I feel like that last way is the uh, easiest. If we know where she is, we could very easily find a way to get into a fight with her, which would cause that. So, yeah. Yeah, if we find a way to just summon one again, and then we just, you know, gang up and I'll kill it at once. Either way, we could get some venom. All right. So successful investigations all around. <laughs> yes. And I now have a crystal ball that can see where she is. Yes. So, where is she? All right. As you're looking at the crystal ball, she is sneaking back into her apartment. I turn to Frank. Well, what are you waiting for? You're the only one that drives. I guess I was like, oh, what? We're going somewhere? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did I see the crystal ball? I get out my keys. I bring the ball thing with me. I guess it would be easier if it was like a cell phone. I don't know. What do you... What do you want this thing to be, Jeff? I mean, it could be a crystal ball. Should it have limitations? Can I only have it in the house? Can I carry it with me? Can I make it portable? You could take it with you. I imagine it would be easy to break. Okay. I'll bring snacks. All right. So we're all in the car and we get to her house. I guess we park the block next to it so we can see the house. And Did she live in a house or an apartment? Or apartment, apartment, I'm sorry. So that we could see the apartment. And I am watching her on the ball. So am I allowed to see what she's doing? Or can I only... We'll say it, it's almost like uh, it highlights a specific place. Like it's almost like a spot on a map. Okay. Like a GPS. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Dot. Magic GPS. <laughs> okay, magic GPS. 
So I can't actually see what she's doing, but I can see where she is. All right. So she is in her apartment. I am going to use the basic magic to observe another place, i.e. the inside of her apartment. She is still in her apartment, right? Yes, and she is not alone. She is currently fighting somebody in the apartment. I didn't roll yet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Should I well, bother rolling? <laughs> yeah, we'll say he did. That was my mistake. <laughs> See, like, you start doing magic, and then we just see, like, in her window that she's fighting someone. Okay. Yeah, there you go. We could see her window from here. I'm like, hmm. <laughs> Apparently she's fighting someone. I'm trying to think four steps ahead, and I, I forgot the step I was on. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've been there. <laughs> All right, so what should we do now? Should we just go charging in? Well, yeah, I would like to see if I can do something to... Like her control of the mantises without her noticing, so I'm gonna try and do that. So I'm gonna kind of try and sneak in, and while she's distracted, try and do that if that's possible. Okay. Can you do that from the car? Probably not. Okay. I guess we'll at least run into the like go into the apartment. Yeah. All right. Weapons in hand, we go to the apartment. All right. It doesn't take you long to get up there. You hear a shot ring out. But there's still sounds of struggle. Someone's got a gun. You don't know who, maybe the wolf. I'm going to read a bad situation. Okay. And this time I won't answer before you're old. <laughs> I got, uh, let's see. So a seven plus two, nine. So I can ask one question. Yes. What's our biggest threat? At this point, I'm going to say the person that's trying to kill her is the biggest threat because you don't necessarily have an adversarial relationship with her right now. Okay. Can I just attack him? Yeah. So I will just take my magic sword and just swing it at him. Be like, hey, we're here to protect you. I got a 10 to kick some ass. All right. So you get one extra effect as well. Okay. So with my super magic sword, I do three harm with it. And... I am going to face them against a wall, so the time is, like, blocked off. All right, so Selena's like, oh, cool, thanks. You're welcome. Now I'll deal with them. And then she summons a mantid. Okay, and then I'm going to, in that term, roll weird in order to not necessarily do a counter spell, but kind of rest control to some degree. Of course, I rolled a four. <laughs> <laughs> Don't don't rely on me ever to roll in any necessary situation. Wonderful. Okay. I'm going to see what I can do. There should probably be consequences to that one. Yes. She summons the mantid perfectly, oh. but it doesn't listen to her. And is on its own volition now. Okay. And it starts attacking her. Okay. That, realistically speaking, that's what I wanted. So... <laughs> <laughs> So you still win. <laughs> so let me see here. I guess, do we want to try and kill the Mantis? I was a little confused. I'm a little confused as to what your plan here is, Anne. She gets turned to Crystal, so she's no longer a threat. Then we just kill the Mantis, because that shouldn't be, if there's just one of them, it shouldn't be that big a deal. All right. Then we could take the Venom and yep. find the kid. Four safety's sake, I'm going to build a barrier around both of them. It says trap a specific person, minion, or monster. Since they're kind of essentially connected, can I do like a bubble around them? Or do I have to bubble the creature specifically? I would say if you want to catch them both, I would require a, a really good roll, like a 12 plus. Because that would be the added benefit, is you can capture the other person. Okay. I'm going to attempt to catch the monster, and if I get a 12+, plus bonus. Okay. Now, am I allowed to wait until she's crystal? Yeah, you can. Okay. I waited until she's crystal. All right. She tries to fight it, but a gun's not a whole lot of use against it. Like, it kind of chips little pieces of it off, and eventually it bites her in the leg. Okay. I 
got a seven. Okay. With so the plus you, weird. You capture the mantid then? It works imperfectly. Choose your effect and glitch. The keeper will decide what effect the glitch has. So I'm going to take one harm. All right. So you, you form the bubble. So I guess what do I hurt? Yeah, let's see. We'll say there's sort of like a, a kind of magic spark that uh, jumps between your hand and the bubble. And you kind of like burn your hand. Oh, uh... Ah, stupid shields. All right, so the monster is captured. And Selino's like, what the heck? That wasn't cool. She's been bitten, but she's not crystal yet. You can see, like, bits of crystal on her, but... So it's, a, it's, a, it's not necessarily a thing that happens immediately. Okay. So crystallization doesn't happen immediately. Uh, and she points her gun at you and says, okay, now you're going to fix that. Yeah, about that. It's going to take a little bit. But we did find the cure. Well, okay, start it. We can't start it here. We have to go back. Am I still fighting this other guy? You're still oh, holding him there, yeah. <laughs> I love the idea. Oh, um, I thought he was, we're... like, down. <laughs> We were, we were no. We were, I thought we were still. I was like, "Why does she keep going? Aren't we in? And like, aren't we still fighting?" Oops. Yeah, you still got the guy pinned. He is going to try and get himself free. Guy's probably going to die very soon, anyways. <laughs> he does one harm, and that's his turn. Do I get to do my three harm and him back? Yes, and then he's and his turn. Yeah, he's down. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he, he's either dead or unconscious, whatever you want. He will be unconscious. Okay. So I took one hem. So, yep, I just kind of, like, hit him with the side of my set, and he just gets knocked out. So to recap, I have a gun being pointed at me. He's down. Frank is finishing up, and now it's Anne's turn? Yep. And so I'm going to do something where she's pointing a gun at you. I'm going to point a gun at her, and I'm going to attempt to use persuasion, which I get a plus one to that. Yay. Six. Uh, rolled an eight. So they reveal something you can do to convince them, though but likely costly, tricky, or distasteful. So basically... I'm, in this opinion, just like, calm down, and we will work this out, and there is no need for violence. In character, trying to buy time. Uh, was that one of your character abilities, or nope, manipulate someone? that's some? just a uh, manipulate someone. Uh, all right, she, she responds back, you're pointing a gun at me, and you took control of one of my mantids away from me. Why should I trust you? And then that's the cost, is you have to... Convi you have to come up with a reason why. My actual legitimate reason, I am not lying when I say this, I want this whole situation to be done, and if everybody walks away from this and just goes on with living their lives and not turning random people into crystal, that'd be great for everybody, including you. All the money, though. Uh... Want to know what you can't do with money? Not die. <laughs> well, I mean, it depends on the circumstances, but point made. I mean, right now, money does not help you. All right, she puts her gun point away. Point you can't buy happiness. And I actually will put mine away as well, because why not? How long does it take to turn her into crystal? Do we see any side effects? Like, you know, it starts like with her fingers and toes and it's like moving in. Oh, maybe it starts in the middle and moves out. I would assume it starts with wherever they bit her. I am not putting away my weapon. It's, it'd be really hard to put that away anyway, unless it's I like know. Power of Grace Gold. I'm not seizing it. <laughs> it is still in my hand. Once all harm is marked off, so it's like a ticking timer. Let's see, the bite did three harm. By the time you get back to the place, she'll already be fully crystallized, but, like, she knows she's not dead when crystallized, so she'll go with you. We did state we have a way to cure it, so... 
Is there anything in this guy's pockets that I knocked out? Yeah, he's got a picture of Salino so that he can identify uh, his target. Is, is there uh, keys? Yes. How did he get him? Yes, he does have keys. And a wallet, okay. but there's no ID in it. Oh, I wanted to know his name. Can we look around to see if there's anything? You know what? I'm just going to start dragging her to the car. Yeah, she's and... like, come on, guys. I don't have too much time left. I'm going to start dragging her to the car. You two look around a little bit and then catch up really quick because it's going to take me a turn to drag her to the car. I will say this. There's not really anything in this apartment. We actually already checked this in the first session. Yeah, but there could be stuff now that she snuck back in. Maybe she dropped something. Uh, There's a bag of Burger King on the counter. That's it. Her, her sandwich is interrupted. She wanted dinner. Okay. <laughs> what kind of sandwich did she get? <laughs> Just got a cheeseburger and fries. Plebeians. Man, now I'm hungry. I really want onion rings. Oh, it sounds so good. And Steve, did you ask if there was money in the wallet? I, I feel like you said something and you got talked over. Well, because I asked if there was anything in if the wallet. If there was anything in the wallet. Okay, I didn't hear that. Yeah, it, it's got like 20 bucks in there. A couple of coupons. Burger King coupons? Coupons in the wallet. <laughs> <laughs> That's so strange. <laughs> Um, I'll take the 20 bucks. On a way out, I'm just gonna, like, call the cops and be like, I heard shooting in this apartment! Uh. <laughs> just, like, leaving him there unconscious. Oh, uh, wait, um, how do, what do we, what do we do with the man? It's still trapped there. Yeah, it's still trapped there! <laughs> and then the- We need the mantis! Yeah. Can we just kill it? Because we could get the venom from its dead body, right? Yeah, you can. You'll have to fight it, but yeah. So I place her down uh, in the hallway, and I tell Anne to drag her to the car. And then I go in, because I can use a luck point to make any roll a 12. Help out. On a 12+, plus, your help lets them act as if they just rolled a 12, regardless of what they actually got. So I'm going to use help out, and I'll try and roll. I'm helping him out, because he's killing it, right? Yes. So, yeah, you automatically get a 12 to do any damage. Now, do I need to pop the bubble? Uh, Yes. Okay. I release the bubble and your attack. All right. Yeah. So you automatically roll as if you rolled a 12. So. Okay. So she used the luck point. Yeah. So. I guess I'll do my attack as a. I rolled a 12, which means I hit. And I guess I'll make it inflict double the normal harm. Okay. Double the normal harm. Six damage. Six damage. Okay, you just, like, swing down, and we'll say that uh, Dr. Grace temporarily enchanted your sword, and because of that, it just cleaves the thing right in half, and it's dead. Double magic. Okay. It's already magic. <laughs> it's already a magic set. Okay, well, that was easy. I collect the venom. Okay, you don't need to roll for that. You You get it. Yeah. All right, let's get out of here. As Anne is struggling in the hallway to drag the... Fine. I'm, ever... used, to get, I'm, used, I'm used to getting drunk people to uh, cars, so it's fine. Yeah, at, at this point, her legs are already completely crystallized. Right, like a drunk person. <laughs> <laughs> And that's all for this week. We hope you can join us next week for the seventh and final part of our actual play of Monster of the Week. Our podcast can be found on Spotify, Google Podcast, or our Mountain of Sourcebooks YouTube channel. 
Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at MOSB underscore 2022 and follow our Facebook page, MOSB dash Mountain of Sourcebooks, where you can get updates on everything that's happening with us and in the world of gaming. And with all that said, thanks for joining us and be careful on your way back down the mountain.